This is Dan York and I'm here with Dan Burnett, who is the Director of Speech Technologies at Voxeo and also the leading editor of the Voice XML 3 specification for the W3C. So, Dan, uh, this Voice XML 3 draft came out recently and, and we haven't really talked about what is Voice XML in general. What does Voice XML mean for a, for a user? So, Voice XML 3 is, uh, as a user, you're going to see a, what we call a profile of Voice XML 3. We have multiple profiles. Uh, you're going to see a profile that looks an awful lot like Voice XML 2. So when you first start to, to code, you won't notice a lot of differences. But what we've done is we've added a lot more flexibility under the covers. So it's possible to do many other things uh, that you could not do in Voice XML 2. But you won't have to right from the beginning. You'll be able to code very similarly to the way you do today. So then what's the, so why? <laughs> I mean, um, if, if Voice XML 2 does everything, I mean, what's the big deal about Voice XML 3? Well, there are a number of things that, that people have complained about with respect to Voice XML 2. One of the biggest ones is the form interpretation algorithm. What does this, that mean? <laughs> that's the algorithm that determines where you go next within a form or when you transition from one form to another. So if you have four fields of information you're collecting in a form, uh, let's say where you're flying from, where you're flying to, the date, and so on. Um, there's an algorithm built into Voice XML 2 that says how you decide which of those fields gets filled next, and that is the form interpretation algorithm. Ah, okay. So it's wonderful if what you want to do is a form in precisely that structure and that follows that algorithm. Okay. But if you actually want a different flow of control, you want things to, to move in a different way in your application, the form inter interpretation algorithm can actually get in your way. So or I should say there are people who get frustrated with the, the form interpretation algorithm, which we call the FIA or FIA, so I don't have to keep saying form interpretation algorithm. <laughs> so okay. the, the FIA. The uh, FIA still exists in Voice XML 3, but it will, it will exist as a controller. It will be a transition controller that is author overridable. So there'll be an actual document that specifies how transitions occur within a form, and the author can rewrite that to be something completely different if they want. So that's one example of something that we've done in, in Voice XML 3. So, so to just dig on that a little bit more, I guess, so if I'm, uh, if I'm thinking about an application, I call into it, and like you just said, and I'm checking my flight or something like that. So what you're saying is that I have, as a designer of that flight information system, I have a little bit more flexibility about how people move through the app? Is that a fair way to say it? I think a better way to say it is that it will be simpler to code the dialogue flow that you want. Okay. So you can do it today in Voice XML 2. Yeah. It's just that you might have to, to do a little bit to work around the natural behavior of the FIA in some cases. Okay. Whereas in Voice XML 3, you'll just write a brand new controller that does exactly what you want it to do. So your code will be more compact in Voice XML 3. Okay. Is that a, what else does it bring? Uh, it also has, it will have the ability to do real-time controls. So that means an ability to specify um, special grammars that respond immediately when matched. So if you press a three, it will instantly change the volume of the prompt or the speed of the prompt. We're still working out exactly what capabilities we're going to allow to be uh, Oh, controlled. okay. So if you if the if the audio was going too fast or too slow or something like that, you could be able to press it and speed up the, right. the or playback or something like that. Yes. Yeah, so or if you're hard of hearing and and you'd like to, you'd like it to be louder, you hit this key while the while it's playing your oh, okay. voicemail back to you, and you can uh, you can hear it louder. Oh, okay. Uh, so that's a that's a new thing that's that's being added. We're also adding some speaker authentication capabilities. That's speaker identification and verification. Okay. Uh, that's going to be built into the core, although we're still working out exactly how that's going to happen. So that's for biometrics, for you know, my voice is my password type of thing. Yes, that's right. Okay, that's cool. So what's um, so from a developer point of view, so we can say it's simpler. Is it is it is the coding of the actual voice XML changing, or is it just that there's easier ways to do things? I think it, it might help a little bit for me to talk a little bit about how we've structured the language. Sure. What we did is we took Voice XML 2, which is one giant monolithic language, and have broken it up into different modules of related functionality. 
so there is a grammar module, and there is a prompt module, and there is a play and recognize module. Okay. And a profile is a collection of these modules put together, maybe with some syntactic sugar or convenient syntax to make it simpler to program. So what that means is that your your legacy profile, what we're calling it, the legacy profile, which is like Voice XML 2.1, will have syntax that looks like Voice XML 2.1, but that is layered on top of core syntax for each of these different modules. So you will have more flexibility in what you can do. Hmm. It's not all hard coded with only the Voice XML 2 syntax. So if, for example, we're we're adding um, the par and seek elements from Smile, the synchronized uh, multimedia, multimedia integration language, I think it is. Um, anyway, uh, that specification allows you to uh, have media streams that go in parallel and to synchronize them. We've pulled the parallel and sequential elements from that, so you can say, I would like to do, play these three prompts at the same time, or I would like to play this prompt and do a recognition and a verification. So why would I want to play prompts at the same time? You might want to have uh, background music going uh -huh. on at the same time as something else you're playing. Okay. Just as an example. Okay. Uh, it, it gives you a little bit more control over exactly what happens when. Okay. Uh, so and that's, that's something that will exist even in this Voice XML 2 like profile, which we call the legacy profile. You will, you'll have that capability still there for when you're ready to use it. Okay, so conceivably, if I wanted to have a voice XML browser on a, on a small, like an embedded device, and I didn't need, for instance, uh, say, speech recognition, I could have a profile that had the different pieces but didn't have the speech recognition, so the browser would be smaller and more compact or something like that. That, that should be possible. Right now, the voice browser working group is defining this legacy profile, a basic profile, which doesn't include form, uh, okay. for example. It, it, no it FIA? Includes, right, no FIA. Okay. Uh, it includes, you know, basically play and recognize and, and uh, some of the other core capabilities like verification. Okay. And then a maximal profile that includes everything. It's like the kitchen sink The kitchen profile, sink is thrown right? in. Yeah, okay. But we are still working out how additional profiles would be defined, whether oh, okay. it would be defined within the voice browser working group or whether others might define their own profiles. But in theory, there's no reason you couldn't create your own profile out of a, a subset of the modules. Okay, so it could be on a mobile device or a network server or something like that. Right, right. Cool. So a draft came out recently, and uh, it sounds like there's further drafts coming out. What's the kind of time frame? When will we start seeing Voice XML 3 being something really solid or interesting to try out? We're thinking that the major functionality pieces will all be into the specification sometime between the first and second quarters of next year. 2010, okay. Yeah. Uh, and at that point, then it's a matter of working through a, a lot of details to make sure that the syntax works correctly okay. in all the ways we want it to work. But what that means, practically speaking, is that if you start looking at the specification uh, in three to six months from now, you'll be able to see... Every, you'll be able to see how the language fits together. Okay. At that point. Cool. Well, thank you very much, Dan. Where can people learn more about Voice XML three? Uh, you can go to the W three C's website, www.w three dot org, and uh, actually they just changed the website, so uh, I'm actually not sure what the proper link, you know, the yeah. how to get through it by linking. But uh, the easiest way is www.w three dot org slash voice. Okay. If you go to that link, you'll get to the Voice Browser Working Group, and we have links to all of the specifications there, including Voice XML 3. Great. Well, thanks, Dan. I've been talking to Dan Burnett, who is the Director of Speech Technologies at Voxeo and the leading editor on the Voice XML 3 specification for the World Wide Web Consortium. Thank you. Thank you.